one month since we put in our Florida native plant landscaping. And I am so excited to show it to you. I've been waiting for some better weather, but there's a hurricane on the way and I don't know if it's gonna look as pretty as it, it does right now. So I figured let's go take a look at all these wonderful butterfly attracting, bee attracting, bird attracting, drought tolerant, and maybe hurricane proof plants. <laughs> so let's go check out our Florida native plants. <laughs> You guys know I love Florida native plants and I was thinking about the other day because we've done so many different projects from the original Florida native plant landscape and the arch to our wildflower garden to my fever dream project and all of them have been wonderful and great and it hit me I counted it up we have added over 50 Florida native plants let me back that up again we have added 50 Florida native species to our yard. Not just plants, species, over 50 of them. So what I'm going to do today, before we have to evacuate for a hurricane, <laughs> is I'm going to take you through, show you some of these gorgeous looking Florida native plants so that you can get inspired for your garden. So let's start with all these fabulous plants and where we are at. And I'll tell you about the highs, the lows, and then the kind of in-between things that have been happening here. So let's start off with one of the plants that we knew right from the beginning that we were going to be adding to this garden. <gasps> Starry Rosenweed. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Look at this flower. I mean, look at the size of it. I think this plant has looked fabulous. It's got this single stalk and then you kind of have these branches happening and we keep getting flower after flower after flower. And then even look at the spent bloom area. I mean, that's super, super pretty. And the other cool thing that you may wonder about this plant is this has been attracting the monarchs. The monarchs have been all about starry rose and weed in my garden. I have seen them hanging out over here. One, maybe because there's some milkweed nearby, but especially been hanging out here getting some nectar and pollen. Pollen, nectar. <laughs> they are really liking this. So if you want monarchs, this would be a fabulous plant. And if you have a low ground cover, right? That's already filling this area. I think this is a really nice because it comes up and through and then it branches up higher. So it gives you a lot of visual interest up high, visual interest down low, and then kind of leaves you some space to do something here in the middle. Behind that, we have Joe Pie Weed. Oh, this is the one I've been waiting for it to start blossoming. And it's just, it's just starting to open its first flowers. Oh, I was waiting to film this for this one, but 
goodness gracious, we don't know if we're gonna lose it or not. So I figured might as well get the beauty that it is giving us right now. I love how this is just coming up. And I like this color we're getting, which is this kind of, um, this nice pinkish mauveish color. Super pretty. I feel like it, it adds this like another level of depth of color to the area. I can't tell you who's hanging out on it yet because it really hasn't blossomed yet, but it's so pretty. I am a big fan of this one. I, if I lose it, I would add it back in a second. Now, right next to it, we have one of our blazing stars. I cannot remember if this is elegant or graceful. It's one or the other. And it looks like it is just about to get going with some flowers. They have filled in really nicely. We're getting even some new growth going more upright since they all kind of had a lean from the nursery. But you can also see what's happening here is we're getting more stalks on it. So we can get even more and more flowers. And this one's supposed to be more of a purple color, which I think is gonna be lovely with all the other things that we've got going on here. And then here is a very recently planted pink swamp milkweed. We did this in preparation for the hurricane just to get it out here so I didn't have to store it. So we have one there and one there. And then I think this one, I can't remember if I, I had two elegants and one graceful or one graceful and the other as elegant, but look at this one. This one's just starting to open up. Oh, I can't wait to see. If you live, do it, you should live. But <laughs> if it lives, this will be a lovely one. Ooh, I'm standing on some milkweed. Um, this one will be so pretty. And you can see it's about to go on so many parts of it. Oh, oh we can see one of our native wasps. This is why I talk about a lot of times with our native wasps that they're not these big yellow jackets. They're these little ones right here. And they are doing fabulous and wonderful things for your garden, both for your native plants, your vegetables, all sorts of stuff. So they hang out here. Um, so thank you for joining us, Mr. and Mrs. Wasp. But look at this. So this is just about to get opening over the coming week. Ugh, I would wish you survive, survive the hurricane so we can see how pretty you are. Um, but this one has was the first blazing star for me to open up. And you can see even on the other stalks, the very tippy tops are starting to open. And maybe this is driven by the cooler weather because with the hurricane coming in, we've dropped about 10 degrees. So I'm hoping, well, we're just gonna keep hoping. And down here is our world milkweed. It's very fine, very tiny. I don't think we've gotten any egg activity, but I did get a seed pod, which we love. And you can see we also have some aphids. Now, a lot of people ask me, what do you do about the aphids? I do nothing, 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 nothing. Milkweed is notorious for tracting aphids. So I really don't get too pressed about the fact that it's got aphids on it. I let them go and just let them do its thing. And the, really the big thing, oh, more seed pods. Oh, look, seed pods. Oh, more seed pods. Oh, 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 oh. There's too much mulch in the area for these to really be effective at self-seeding. But I can propagate it later with these. So I'm going to go put these in my garage really quick. Yay! We love when our native plants give us seeds. I love when they start self-seeding. My Coreopsis from my wildflower garden has self-seeded in some couple of areas. So I am very excited if any time I can get some. But because I had to do the mulch method to kind of kill the grass, which is a very humane way. I don't know, not humane. Uh, way to not introduce herbicides and pesticides to the area. <laughs> so um, I don't foresee any self-seeding in this area for at least six months. But if there's a seed bank there, sometimes they can pop up. Um, but what will end up happening is I'll end up mulching again. Blah, blah, blah. It's kind of a cycle I go through. But then once I kind of get an area settled and filled in pretty well, then the self-seeding happens which is what's happened in my milkweed garden, my wildflower garden. So I'm excited for the day that this I can really let go. Yes. Okay, so we hit some of these plants. Oh, our parafo parafox, palafox, palafox died. We kind of thought that might happen. So it did happen. So now it's dead. Next year, I think in spring is kind of the best time of year to buy it, transplant it, and let it go to seed. Um, we'll do it spring next year because I do really want it. But that was one of our experimental, ah, I really want it, just go get it, kind of thing. So it's okay, we lost it. But in the middle here, we got our mooly grass. And what's really cool on the mooly, we're just starting to get it opening up. Oh, so you see how there's kind of this reddish color. This is how it becomes that pink puff of an area. Now, I don't know that we're gonna get a full on pink mooly grass cloud going on here, but to see the first signs of it this year is fantastic. So I'm excited to see even more so in the coming years. Oh, oh, look at this, our butterfly weed. This is 
the ones that we propagated from cuttings. And if we look closely, you know what? We might end up getting flowers on this. <gasps> that is very exciting. Looks like we've had some <laughs> definite caterpillar activity. Though with the wasps in the area, I'm sure they've cleaned them up pretty quickly. They don't really have the protection like we have over in the monarch milkweed garden and that's okay because over time this will just get better and better and better because in the winter month this will oh 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 actually there you are look at you hi we see you oh we have one well if you live good job keep going um there's three milkweeds there's three butterfly weeds here asclepius tuberosa and two swamp milkweeds. So if it eats it all down, that's totally fine. And if I need to, I can move you over to the monarch milkweed garden where I have much bigger swamp milkweed. Oh, look, a little bit more flowering. Oh, look, it is so interesting. I've never really gotten to look at mooly grass closely. Oh, look, it's, it's coming out at kind of these midpoints, almost like it's breaking the grass for this to come out. That's so interesting. Interesting, interesting. Looking fabulous. Keep going. Keep going, little caterpillar. Keep going, okay. Let's keep moving on with our tour. And behind me, I have my Pineland Heliotrope. This one was like, I added it and I thought, eh, you know, we'll try it. I am very happy with it. This thing has, over the months since we planted it, continuously had flowers and it just continuously had flowers. I feel like the more settled it gets and when it's in season, this is gonna be great. It's gonna just fill in the area with a nice little bit of white. And having some of these other more vibrant colors popping up and through like the oranges and the purples and the mauves and the yellows this is gonna look really pretty but this has been doing a really nice job of spreading and just continually having flowers so even if you want kind of a more traditional garden i feel like this is a very good like ground cover traditional garden if you don't want to go <laughs> crazy like me so i really like the pineland heliotrope also everglades square stem AKA salt and pepper, been very cute. Very, very cute. I, it's I continued to have flowers the whole time since we planted it with more and more blooms. Very pretty. And I always love a good spent bloom. That's just very interesting and attractive. So this one also, I think this is like a really neat one if you wanna mix it in into other landscapes. Um, Cause you can see it's, it's definitely spreading like this. It's not really coming up. But if you've had it mixed with something else, just having these little puffs coming out, they're not really puffs, but having this really interesting little flower coming up would be very pretty. Now we have to talk about my favorite. Oh my God, this has been my favorite. It was my favorite when I bought it and it's been my favorite since I put it in and it's been favorite all month. I love, love, love Marsh Rattlesnake Master. And you know who loves it too? the bees oh my gosh bumblebees carpenter bees big fat bees always every morning on these I don't remember if I've seen butterfly activity oh hi monarch just flying by me um I don't know if I've seen butterflies on this one as much as I have the starry rosenweed but oh it's just gorgeous it's gorgeous when the new flowers are coming out like this I just think the new little flowers are just so interesting looking they have this color and then you get this blue coming out. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. I mean, it's just, oh. this plant, all the phases is gorgeous. I think if you got a semi slightly swampy boggy near a sprinkler head can keep it moist area, this is just so interesting, so pretty pollinators love it. I think, I mean, it, I've just, I want more of this. When we expand into the backyard, this is on my list all day to be in the garden because I just absolutely love this. And the wildlife, they, they, they're giving a sign of approval on this one. So absolutely hundred percent recommend Marsh Rattlesnake Master. It's a weird name. I don't know why it's called that. I did no research on it, but I'm telling you gorgeous, 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 gorgeous gorgeous okay we're gonna move on I could just gush this is it's just, oh, so pretty okay so we got some more pineland heliotrope um echinacea right here it's been slowly growing spreading spreading and growing so maybe one day soon we'll get some flowers coming up 
and then that's just what it's doing. And then we got another Echinacea there. And then of course we have our Coreopsis Leavenworthy, which has historically been my favorite, absolutely favorite wildflower. I love this one. It's just so happy. And honestly, great bloom season starts off in the springtime, goes through the summer. You know, it'll kind of have a uh, fate and phase. It's not the word blushes, right? So you'll get a set of them. Then you'll get another set of them. Then you'll get another set of them. And the more they self seed, then you'll get more plants, gorgeous, happy. And I just love how, you know, this one, when I got it from the nursery is kind of bent this way, but normally they're up more upright. And so you have just them hanging out nice and high up on these little spindly stems. And then when they fade, right, you've got these pods coming out, or I'm sorry, and then you get these spent pods, which are super cute. I just, Coreopsis Leavenworthy, I'm a big fan of. I think Coreopsis lanceolata is very similar when it comes to just how it looks. It just tends to have, it has the yellow center versus more of the black brown center of Coreopsis Leavenworthy, AKA Leavensworth tick seed. I love this one and it fills in really nicely. Once we get kind of more this all really, really going, oh, it will just fill this area. It will be so pretty, so pretty. Oh my gosh, love this one. Okay, before I step on more plants. Uh, and then we got Railroad Vine. This one has been a champ with blooming, then blooming, then blooming. You can even see there's some future blooms hanging out right here. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. Yeah, there we go. So you can see we've had some spent blooms and here are some upcoming blooms. These flowers have been gorgeous. Um, someone sent me a picture. Oh, one, two, three. One of the viewers sent me a picture. They had this in their garden and it just filled in gorgeous. I do wonder if it's going to overtake a bit of the other stuff in here, but, um, and I was talking to Mr. Cliff, he said they used to use these for beach erosion, but railroad vine, gorgeous, beautiful. This is a, definitely like, if you're looking for that kind of semi-tropical look and looking for a native plant, I would say railroad vine, the leaves and structure, plus the color of the flower, which is that kind of fuchsia bright color, really pretty. And then right next to it is Florida green eyes. It's another happy little yellow flower with a green center. And I think it's very pretty. The pollinators have been liking it. The butterflies have been liking it. I like it too, because when it's spent, I think it just has a really, I think it has just a really cute spent structure. I'm a really big fan right now of what do they look like when they're spent. And I love that it just looks like a green flower after the fact, very pretty. And then it has that nice little chocolatey smell, super pretty. Um, I think this one would be really nice kind of mixing in with some other stuff. Like if you had like Pineland Heliotrope, you could get the other type that's like a yellow of that Heliotrope. But the recommendation, I think it was from Josh, was you put this one with this one because this is vanilla flower. And this, I mean, look at those leaves. Forget the flower. Look at the leaves. Look at the stalk. Just a really pretty, interesting look, even before it bloomed. And now it is blooming and oh my gosh, look at that color. Look at that flower structure. Oh, so pretty. I cannot wait to see which wildlife loves this because guess who loves it? Me, I love it. I, and I think this one's super great because it's a similar color as a giant milk, not giant milkweed, giant ironweed has the same color as that, but giant ironweed gets huge and these aren't quite as tall. So a little bit more manageable. Love it. Oh, it's just, oh, let's look at it again. Oh my gosh. So this is what they look like before they've opened. And you can see even before they're opening, they're giving you color. Look at how interesting, just look how interesting, interesting, interesting flowers. Oh, so pretty. This would be fabulous. If I can propagate this, spread this, or buy more of it, I would add it in even more so. I am totally loving this. And then we have our silk grass. We were gonna get another one, but with the hurricane coming, we are gonna hang out and not do that yet. And you can see, it looks like it's starting to put on flowers. I think that's what these are. And they're supposed to get yellow flowers. So this thing will be kind of a paler silvery. I don't know how you can be a silvery yellow, but this would be kind of more of a yellowish color, but not as vibrant, like kind of marigoldish as these ones. Um, it's supposed to be a little bit paler of a yellow. And then of course we have our scrub blueberry, which is not going to be blossoming or flowering right now. You have the ones that I transplanted, which 
ones I transplanted look okay. We'll see how they go over the long term. But I love, I just love how this coloring on scrub blueberry, I mean, even when they have no berries or flowers, I just think the silver tones on these shrubs and then the really pretty kind of reddish tones at the end. I think this is one of those ones, like whether you use it for the blueberries or not, which is great for the wildlife, so you should. This is just like kind of like a nice small shrub. It's just super cute. I, I just think it's just a very attractive shrubbery. <laughs> and then we lost one of our scrub mints, boo, you know, but it's not unusual. And I think we've lost one of our rain lilies just because I keep stepping on it and stepping on one of the others when we were cutting stuff. But let's go to our living scrub mint right over here. Again, really pretty silverish tones. Oh, and look at this. We're about to get way more flowers. And look at that. Oh, these flower. It's been flowering nonstop since I planted it a month ago. And we've got a little bit of purple. I have not noticed any particular pollinators on this one. Um, but I have been, it just has been looking really pretty. And I think it just looks really nice. And I think it really adds to this kind of scrub look that we have in this section. And then, of course, we have our dwarf Simpson stopper. It looks like it put on some new growth here. And hopefully, well, you know, maybe it'll put on some berries for this first year. Maybe not. Um, but we look forward to it. It's got a really nice evergreen look to it. And this is great for our birds once it does start producing berries. And they really could use the berries right now because we're in the fall. And they need to migrate. They are either migrating to Florida and they'll be hungry. Or they're going to be migrating past Florida on down to the Caribbean and South America. So they need them berries. And they can only eat so much of my beauty berries. I only have like this much and I've been actually leaving them. I was going to harvest them for us so we can make beauty berry jam, but I've held off because one, the hurricane and I can tell the birds are actually eating them. So I keep leaving it. So I'm trying to provide some other things like the scrub blueberries, which are edible. I've eaten them before. Um, and then of course our Simpson stopper, that'll be great for them too. Uh, not very <laughs> viewable right here is rain lilies. Two of them survived. The other two were surviving. And then when we went and pruned a tree in the area um, between me stepping on them and us crushing them, we've lost two of them. So, so sad, but that's okay. We'll replace them later. And then we have our sky flower. If you remember, we originally planted this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous blue blooms. Um, it looks like they're, they stopped. They kind of went for the first couple weeks and now they just seem to be hanging out and putting on some new green growth. So we'll let them keep doing that. And if you're thinking, but what about that blue right there? Oh, that's our blue sage, our woodland sage. Oh, so pretty. Oh my gosh, just look at this blue. It is so, 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 so pretty. And it has been doing a great job of just like blossoming and blossoming and blossoming. I am really looking forward to this plant long-term. It's just, it's got such a beautiful look being here in the semi-shade and the vibrancy of the blue in the shade is just really, really pretty. Highly recommend. Do this over those sages that you can usually buy at like other stores. I think this one's gorgeous. And then down here, we've got some woodland phloxes. They've just been hanging out. We know they don't usually blossom until springtime. So they just, they're just gonna keep doing their thing. And then back there, we've had rouge plant. It's been flowering and then putting on berries and then going back to flowering. So right now it's in its kind of flowering phase. And when it has berries, they are bright red berries. So it's kind of cute because it kind of goes through these pale pink flowers. And then it moves into these, like almost look, think like Christmas type berries. Very, very cute. I, I'm really liking this plant. I, it might be getting a little too much sun. Um, I am considering getting some more of this and putting it in the shade garden, but you can see it's put on like new growth down here. So maybe it's okay. Maybe it's happy. I'm excited for this plant, whether it's going to do great here or other places will be, will be foresee in the future. And now we will go to one of my other favorite semi shades to full sun plants. Ah, oh, cardinal flower. So pretty. Look at how red that is. And just with all the purples and yellows and mauves and blues, I feel like this section is very red, white, and blue, but this plant is just what a gorgeous, vibrant red. Now we had three of these. You can see there's one other one way over there. Right there in the middle. Let's see, uh, uh, right there. But the other one, I accidentally broke it right there um, <laughs> when we were doing stuff. Hopefully it comes back. It looked like it had some growth on it. Um, 
but I snapped that stock pretty down at the base. They are supposed to be able to like send up new little stalks every now and then. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully. And while that was all the plants for my Florida native plant landscape beaver dream, I wanted to take you show you a couple other um, native plants that I was just really excited about. And one is my privet senna. This thing has been growing like crazy. We kind of talked a little bit about it in the troubleshooting video. And I was really excited because one, we got at least the first one I found. We got our first caterpillar on it. So cute. Don't touch that one. That one can give you quite the sting. Um, but I was really excited. I really do hope this plant can make it through the hurricane because these are here. That means it's gonna flower. Really, really pretty yellow flowers. So I'm very excited. There's there's like little little blossom pods all over the plant. So I'm very excited to see how this continues to transform and continues to block my neighbor's trash can and recycling bin. Well, this plant has done a really great job for only being like mm, three, four months. Now we'll get a little bit taller, a bit more bushy, um, and then we'll get more caterpillars. So that caterpillar, um, I think is a cloudless sulfur. It's one of the yellow ones. We have multiple yellow ones here and I forget what the difference is in the caterpillars, but there is a difference. Um, but it is part of my vision of recreating kind of how in Kanto, there's just like so many yellow butterflies and that will play a part of that dream of having that. So I'm very excited for that and what's happening there. Ooh, and let's just go to shape. You know what, we're just doing like a Florida native plant tour because there's a lot of things that I'm really excited about and I'm rooting for all my native plants right now because with a category three hurricane, you know, they're meant to survive it. I don't know if they're meant to like look really cute through it, but they're meant to survive it. So one way or the other, we'll be okay in the end with all these plants. But let's go check out some of these shady plants. You know what I'm saying? Shade loving, whatever, come here over here. So here we have our climbing aster. This is supposed to go and blossom in the fall. And since we're just entering fall, no blossoms yet. Hi, Monarch. And so I'm really excited for this one. It's supposed to get these pale aster flowers about that big. And you can see it is covering this side. Plus I think hiding in here is some poinsettia. So you can see this climbing aster. I planted it, I think fall last year, and it has done a wonderful job filling in over here. And then over on this side, you can see this leaf. This is actually uh, a white passion flower. I have gotten zero flowers, but I have met my original goal, which was not to get flowers, but to get lots and lots of zebra long wings. We never, not never, we used to only get one zebra long wing in a blue moon. And um, Jordan gave me the tip about try the white passion flower. I think the zebra longlings will really like that and then we'll handle shade. And he was right. I have gotten so many zebra longlings. I don't really get gold fritillaries on it. I get zebra longlings and that's what I wanted. And we've had constant zebra longlings through their season, basically spring, summer, fall, you know, other than the coldest months, they have been consistently putting their eggs over here, consistently fluttering around. I've loved it. So white passion flower. And then we have our very bushy and happy shiny coffee. It's just doing such a nice job filling in here. I feel like we need to give it some friends, but that's a future project. But I think it's just doing lovely. It's looking shiny. It's being happy down here. And it's just hanging out below my cage with all my white passion flower vines on here. I have no idea if we've got caterpillars right now. I'm betting we do because I see some eating leaves. And then down here, was um, corky stem passion flower or passion vine. And the Gulf fritillaries keep coming for that one. Now we used to have a ton of Gulf fritillaries, but then it's like really slowed down. I think it's because they've eaten all the passion flower. And then of course we've got more of our aster, climbing aster, and then a little bit of aquatic milkweed hiding down there and doing its thing. Now, who else? Who else should we go and visit? Let's go check out the wildflower garden, because why not? You guys are just going to get to see so many natives today because why not? Not. Oh, and of course over here, I have my pink swamp wolf weed and there's some butterfly weed in here. And then of course, giant iron weed. And this is what I was talking about. It is tall. And what it does, if you can see down here, is it goes up and then it falls over, which not the most convenient since that's my neighbor's driveway. Um, I think next year I need to do 
something different. I love the giant ironweed, but I don't love how much it falls over. Maybe I just need to prune it more, or I just need to prune everybody else back a little bit so it gets more sun, because it's definitely wanting to go this way for sunlight. So milkweed, oh, and then of course we've got our native porterweed filling in all over the place. It really does need to be trimmed back, but we'll wait till after the storm for any trimmings and prunings. And then hiding in here is some Stokes Aster. Um, it doesn't look like much right now. It's kind of gone uh, to seed again, it, but it has the gorgeous flowers. And here's some ones that just put out their flowers and now they're kind of done doing their thing. But they just, maybe it's gonna have more flowers. Oh, I guess we're getting another round of flowers. These ones are spent, so pretty. And then of course, beach verbena down here. Tons of frog fruit filling in the entire area. Our dotted horse mint slash bees balm hanging out back here. Um, if you look at those tall stalks right there, that's sweet goldenrod. Should be blooming within the next few weeks, honestly. And then um, some blue curls behind that. Oh, and a little bit of blanket, uh, blanket flower left. The blue curls bloom in the morning and then they kind of just do this at the end of the day. So they haven't, I don't remember them really blooming in the summer, but they have come full force. As soon as it dropped like five degrees, <laughs> they were like, ah, we're here, we're back. So they are looking super cute. There's a little bit more coreopsis in here. And then um, they've been flowering most of the summer. They kind of stopped right now. And that is, of course, our sunshine mimosa. Our little tickle me plant, our sensitive, sensitive plant. So that one is doing great, spreading all over the place. Should we visit anyone else before I head on in and finish evacuating? <laughs> uh, I do have some flowers die back very suddenly, but it's still going. It's gone and bloomed almost the entire year. And I feel like my native, um, my first native landscape project right over yonder here, the Blue Ocean Morning Glory flowers, I don't know if you can see, there were a few up there this morning, but because it's not morning anymore, they have closed up for the day. Our yellow top, narrow leaf yellow top flower had been going strong all summer. I think if we give it a good prune, we'll get another flush of flowers because these, see, this is the flowers. They are very tiny, very pretty, but what was gorgeous for the summer was that there was so much yellow in this area. And our coral honeysuckle was putting out their trumpet flowers, but it looks like everybody's kind of slowed down a little bit right now, which is okay. We're okay with that. And then over here, we've got our beauty berry. And this beauty berry, look at this. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, so pretty. Everybody's so happy about this. And our scorpion tail. Scorpion tail, come back this year. It was very unhappy last year. And I think the mulch, having too much mulch around it, not happy. And since the mulch is broken down, I think it's maybe getting a little bit more fast draining, which it likes. But this one's great. It's been kind of a nice shrubby, bushy plant. I will tell you though, Bees like it, butterflies like it, but wasps love this. I see the most variety of wasps on scorpion tail. So if you're looking for healthy and beneficial wasps for your garden, scorpion tail. And my pine land lantana, oh, it looks like the blossoms have faded on it, but it is down here. It looks like we got another set coming in, but our pine land lantana hanging out down below. Really good low shrubby plant. We have our maypot passion flower hanging out down here. Uh, or maypot passion vine. We've had zero flowers this year. Last year we had so many flowers, so pretty. And we have had non-stop aggressive gulf fritillary activity. So it has been like sticks. And I think maybe the gulf fritillaries maybe have migrated a little bit. So I ain't saying, I'm just saying. They're chilling out a little bit. So it's finally being able to <laughs> catch up. Oh, right, and we did that other planting in front of the window. I will tell you, the Calamanthia wasn't as happy. I know it was supposed to be able to take semi-shade. It's too much shade back here. Oh, both of those back here. So we've got, of course, a monarch. So I guess I can sit here and say, beach mist flower, actually in danger to the keys. Um, this purpley blue, the butterflies like it when they can find it. And it has, was very slow going. And then all of a sudden, boom, it has spread so far forward. I don't know why I'm whispering, like as if the monarch's gonna leave me. Uh, <laughs> but it's really cool. I don't know if it's drying its wings or what. Um, and then in there, we also have our native wild petunia. I've noticed that it has slowed down a bit on flowering right now, uh, but otherwise it's slowly kind of 
perking up through the beechmus flower and they're both kind of spreading this away and then the frog fruit's running back to them this away and of course everybody's favorite people's favorite birds favorite bees favorite butterflies favorite firebush firebush looks fabulous oh and our monarch has gone right over here where'd you go right here right here right here there it is right there um over on our firebush and you can see when it gets stressed out it gets this really pur pretty purple leaves um, but hopefully it's getting a little bit happier right now oh look some bees flying behind me I just feel like our natives are looking really good. Some are looking their best. Some are looking, eh. but you know what? When you plant for all the seasons, you're gonna always have something that's gonna be loving the weather that we have. So my big thing right now is, is I hope they all love the hurricane and they can do a fabulous job surviving because <laughs> I would like to keep all of them. So I hope this got you inspired and excited to go and plant native plants. And if you wanna watch the original shopping trip, go ahead and check out this video right here. Or if you want to watch me install all these plants, go ahead and check this video out right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.